I'm not sure how much longer I have. No one believes my story. None of my doctors. My family and friends are supportive, but they all think I've lost my mind. If I haven't lost it already, I'll probably lose it, along with everything else that's been taken from me. Let me go back. This all started on a summer night when I was 14. My family and I, we had just come home from the movies. When I got out of the car, the air was still, it was warm. If it were not for the porch light, we would have been shrouded in the same blackness up in the sky. In spite of the darkness, the atmosphere seemed calm. Don't forget you have to take the garbage out, my brother said. Oh, come on, I'll do it in the morning, I replied. My dad gave me a look and said, They pick it up real early. Are you going to get up at five to take it out? I didn't say anything. Just take it out tonight, he said. Yeah, I had to take it out last week, my brother said. We've got a long driveway. It has the garage at one end and the street at the other. The driveway was dark, and my mind filled the yard with rabid skunks and possums that ate their own. I rushed as quietly as I could to the bins, and I dragged them to the street. They made a terrible racket. I was almost to the street when I heard a clank. My brother, he had dropped three bags of trash on the porch. I stopped dragging the bins and I reluctantly walked back to collect them. The bags were heavier than usual and I had to drag one of them more than carry it. Something was rolling on the ground behind me. A bag had torn and there were jars and cans rolling about. I took the two bags that were still intact and I put them into the bins. Muttering bad words to myself, I sorted back to the rolling jars and cans. Some of them were sticky, others were wet. I cursed my brother as I crouched down to collect the trash and bundled it up into the torn bag, holding it like a swaddled baby. Our porch light started flickering, and it was then I noticed a strange glow. When I turned around, something was standing a few feet in front of me. It was somewhat humanoid in form, yet its form seemed loose somehow. This thing, whatever it was, appeared to be made of some sort of strange electricity. Its colours shifted all over. Yellow, orange, white. The pulse of its transformations. It was almost hypnotic. I stood there, my mouth agape, holding the swaddled trash. My mind was filled with such terror and such wonder that I seemed to be frozen in place. At least, that's what I thought at the time. It felt like this thing was examining me somehow. As I peered into its face, if you could call it that, my own face, it seemed to materialize onto it, like some bizarre transmission. The thing looked at me with my own face for what felt like an eternity. Suddenly, it disappeared. I don't remember it running off, beaming away or being taken up in a ship. It was just 
gone. For a moment I stood there. I could feel my mobility had returned, but I was not ready to use it. What I had seen was unbelievable. Are you still out there? My dad yelled out to me. Yes, I said in a meek voice. No back talk. No blaming my brother. I simply took the garbage out to the bin and went inside. Are you alright? My dad asked. I... I'm fine, I said in that same meek voice. Did you see something out there? I simply shook my head, went upstairs, and got ready for bed. After a few weeks had passed, I was more curious than afraid. I began consuming every bit of media I could get about paranormal occurrences. One day, my brother and my best friend asked me what I was up to. I decided to come clean with them. Are you crazy? My brother asked me. Are you like, on something? My best friend asked. No matter how much I tried to explain, they just didn't believe me. One day, whilst reading through one of my books, I found what I was looking for. My blood ran cold and the hair on my arms stood up. There it was, in a black and white photograph. The lack of colour did not detract from my dread, but somehow the black and white did not do the thing justice. A form that looked like a man made of television snow. According to this book, the thing was, in fact, an alien. The author didn't seem to know whether this thing was an extraterrestrial or an extra-dimensional being. Perhaps, for some reason, the author didn't want to know. Scholars often have the luxury to ponder things from a safe distance. They are too objective or detached from a situation to be afraid, like those who experience it firsthand. However, there are times when their knowledge imbues them with a sense of understanding, which in turn causes them a sense of foreboding that strays beyond average comprehension. I scoured the internet for images of this alien. When I saw a gallery of the things staring back at me, my heart sank. I wondered if it was a thing or things. With this realization, fear had taken the place of curiosity. I didn't dare read what the book had to say on the matter, nor did I have the will to see what the internet had to offer on the subject. I closed the image search and the book. My parents approached me a few days later. Your brother told us what you... Um... We'd like you to go and talk to someone... My mum said. A shrink? I asked. A psychologist, my dad said. We just want you to get the help that you need, she said. Both of them looked scared. I'm blessed that I have people who care about me. They were so desperate to help me. So many people are not as lucky as I am in that regard. Unfortunately, I don't think anyone could offer me the help I truly need. First, I went to the psychologist. We talked about what happened. 
He wanted to know what I thought it meant. A short time after that, my fingers began to twist into strange knots. My voice would utter strange, involuntary sounds. Then I started to hold my breath. Not because I wanted to, but because something was making me. Every time this happened, the lights would flicker, and televisions, radios and computers switched on and off. When I started holding my breath, my shrink decided I needed pharmacological help. I was prescribed anti-anxiety meds, antipsychotics, and muscle relaxants. They helped a little bit, for a short while. My legs started to have trouble. I couldn't hold myself up. Soon after that, I found myself stuck in a wheelchair. I could technically walk and stand, but my brain would not allow it. That's when the neurologist got involved. After a battery of tests and my family's life savings, the neurologist had no answer for my parents. We were on the verge of losing everything. Somehow, my parents managed. I am so grateful that they never gave up on me. Things got better about five years after that. The vocal and breath phenomena had stopped. I was even able to get a degree online. It was easy. I had spent the rest of my youth in books and on the computer, soaking up information like a sponge. It was my only choice, really. I thought maybe things were starting to turn around. Two years later, my parents were clipped by a trucker who'd fallen asleep at the wheel. My parents had been my rock for so long. I didn't know how I could manage without them, even if I was somewhat recovered. My brother paid for a lovely service and had them buried out at Spring Hill Gardens. As we left the cemetery, the lamps lining the driveway began to flicker and the radio went berserk. My hands and legs knotted I began to hold my breath while a noise tried to escape from my throat. My brother rushed me to a hospital three k's away. Everything stopped once we got in the parking lot, but he forced me to get checked out. The doctors thought stress triggered a relapse. Five years have passed since my brother and I buried our parents. Six months ago, I began having heart palpitations. Three months ago, I started to feel a pressure in my head. It's like someone or something is pressing down hard on my brain. My teeth feel like they're being tightened and my frontal lobe goes from hot to cold. The back of my head feels like it's in a vice. I have use of both of my hands. Well, sometimes. I'm sitting up in a hospital bed. They've given me a laptop to amuse myself. My legs are not working again. My vision, beginning to blur. And my voice is gone. I don't think I'll ever leave this place. I'm too far gone. It's taken me two days just to type this out. My laptop is fading from bright to dark by itself. The radio is changing the stations on its own. 
Lights are flickering in my room. The hallway's gone dark. The machines that are monitoring me, they're turning off. But I don't think the hospital staff are aware. My brain is dough, being kneaded by harsh, unseen hands. My heart feels like it's going to burst out of my chest. I feel something dripping out of my ear. I can only assume it's blood. There's an orange glow in the hallway now. I don't know what's going to happen to me next, but with some luck, I can finish this before my laptop shuts down. Whatever happens, I hope my brother will be okay. For almost 15 years, I have been poked, prodded, scanned, examined. Doctors have said words like Tourette's, dystonia, lupus, and epilepsy. The psychologists and the nurses they are as lost as the neurologists and psychiatrists. They have no idea what caused my affliction. But I do. It was the thing in the driveway. <laughs>